at the end of this tasting, it would be really nice if you all would try, according to what you like the most, to make your own Chianti blend with, with everything. So for now, yeah. we, we move on to our Ciliagiolo. So Ciliagiolo means cherry in Italian, because the, the, it looks like a cherry on the, on the vine as it grows, and it has this amazing cherry aroma and uh, flavour. So, so we move on to the Ciliagiolo. <laughs> and please let me know your final blend, eh? your yes, ideas. Right. Yeah, blend. if anyone, if anyone <laughs> strikes gold. <laughs> but also, one thing I'm noticing no, actually is I do have some pecorino cheese. No! Okay. How the, what yeah. the heck? How did you, what did you have to do to get that? <laughs> but um, the Sangiovese is really, really good with the. Um, um, with the pecorino, but actually the um, the cavallo less so. It's, it's like a, it, it, the pecorino is just a bit brutal for it. Ah, that would be yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think it's a wine almost too <laughs> too soft spoken. Not, not drink on its own, but drink just with little kind of little um, and you know antipasti kind of little nibbly things. Yeah. You know? Absolutely no. It, it really it yeah, supports. I, I, it's it's the the, the, the the um my my uh pecorino is a little strong for it. Yeah. yeah. But it's um and and also um the um the reserva in particular that was really good with the um I've got also got some um, Spanish actually shouldn't do that. Oh um, stop! Let <laughs> <laughs> me go to your house <laughs> with with truffle. Oh my goodness, Fiona! Anyone would think it was Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Jeff and Melissa, you've got a feast over there. Yeah, look, I have that. We do have a feast, yes, and uh, the, the wines um, with the with the with the um, feast with it just absolutely fabulous and very striking. Uh, to, to have the difference between drinking the uh, Chianti alone versus the Chianti with the food. Uh, amazing difference that, that you pointed out and, and one that we all recognized immediately. Uh, tremendous difference in, in softening the tannins and, and so forth. Absolutely. I think it just made it yes, it, more it, delicious it, and more it's such a shame to have to yeah because in England we tend to drink wine without food. Well we have done I think maybe it, it would not in all of our past lives in wine bars and stuff in, in town and actually it's such a shame if you choose a Chianti because actually it deserves to have a, a plate of food but Chilejolo maybe I don't know we'll have to see because this is a, a wine that they when you read about it they say the tannins are more refined slightly um lighter in nature so but this wine does go in wood so have a, have a look and, and see what you think So on the chili journal now, this is um this one. Definitely uh definitely definitely pick up uh, a much a much um um more uh presence of, of the black cherry, the, the cherry kind of flavor to it. It's uh it's delicious. And so Giacomo, chile giolo. So this is a variety that we only have how many hectares of mania? Not even a hectare. We've got a hectare now, but we're planning to invest in a bit less than a hectare. Uh, yeah. We have less than a hectare. So Ciliagiolo is, um, you you find it in Chianti, the, the Chianti, we are really the north, the south border of Chianti. Chianti is too, yeah. too cold for uh, Ciliagiolo actually. You, you find uh, some, but it's, uh, it was, you could find it more in Montalcino, which is warmer, even if it was, uh, it was mistaken for Sangiovese for many years, and uh, also in, um, in Maremma. And the best uh, ciliegiolo are from the continental Maremma, where the summer is a little bit uh, cooler than not uh, close to the sea. And uh, so since I vinified it the first year, uh, I suggested to surgraft uh, and so to have more because it's really the perfect place for Chile Giolo, get very nice result. It's a continental area, we have uh, soil that drains very well because it's sandy soil. And uh, it's genetically speaking, it's a relative of um, Sangiovese. 
yeah, actually the father probably <laughs> and uh, you can see is more structured uh, compared to canaiolo so canaiolo is more complementary complementary mm -hmm. to sangiovese ciliegiolo stands more by itself um, what we didn't say in the beginning that in the traditional vineyard in chianti the plants were already planted mixed together there were not a rovo sangiovese a rovo canaiolo the plants were mixed so you were harvesting the full parcel and the blend was already made this until the 70s then they started to plant separate uh, plot um, because uh, canaiolo was uh, cut in the corner of Sangiovese, was giving a Sangiovese that was softening. more smooth. Yeah, softening. Yes. That's why it's so soft by itself. So. Um, the reason why we work Sangiovese now by itself uh, and Canaiolo also is because the uh, climate has changed so, uh, and the viticulture has changed. So we are not working the same Sangiovese of uh, 40, 50 years ago. And so Sangiovese is uh, perfectly soft enough to stay by itself. And also we are more familiar how to work this variety also to have a single, single variety wine. But also it's a small amount of bottles. Our main production is the Sangiovese. I, I don't think there's nothing better than Sangiovese <laughs> in general. But it's also nice to have a different wine for different occasions. Also, it's more fun to pair with different food, no? And with Ciliagiolo, what would you, would you would you pair with Giacomo? Would you, what would you say? Ah, Ciliagiolo, I think is super very flexible. It's so fruity as character. So Not too heavy or tannic. Actually, that's a question I should ask pose me. to you because yeah. you. Have <laughs> That's <laughs> really mean. <laughs> no, it's it's super pretty. It's super, and I really encourage you. This is definitely one and the canaiolo. Um, if there, yeah, if there's, if there's a couple to hold on to, just to look at again tomorrow. I would really encourage you to hold on to the canaiolo and chidiolo because they they do look different in in uh, on two days, and it's uh, I guess again like humans, like people, they they're living. So um, when you meet them on two different days, it's it's they've had a bit more time to to relax and to breathe. So it's it's really nice to see them. But the chilijolo for me is a little bit easier almost to match because it's not so abrasive perhaps as some people might find Sangiovese. I I now um, really um, it I I uh, have some addiction I think to Sangiovese now. <laughs> I I miss it. It's something that doesn't have a lot of acidity and a lot of tannin and now. Is something I really crave, and and then and now I find um, other wines. Uh, yeah, my, my kind of um, appreciation of acidity is, is somewhat higher for for, for Sangiovese, but the Chile Giorno I think is a bit more approachable. I don't know, but Don and Francesca, do you do you feel this an easier drink than the Chianti, the Chianti, the Chianti Reserva? Is it a bit more? What do you think? Having done your WSETs. Well, we haven't opened any of those wines because there's just the two of us. Oh, so <laughs> you're just taking gonna, notes avidly. We're going to take a, do a, te a tasting a day so that we can, you know, have... Oh, have that's balanced. <laughs> I've got a feeling my other friends are doing that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm once going to do it. <laughs> just when you start talking about wine, you think... Well, I've got a taste. Well, now what am I going to do? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I, I really feel like I, uh, that these wines, I mean, I, maybe, I mean, I, I have a, I'm very relaxed around wine, but I, I, I could drink these wines five days. I, I don't feel like there's a, you don't need any special top to put on. I don't know what any, especially Andy and Fiona, what you think being in the trade, but I, I, I think you can drink these most red wines. If you, as long as you put the cork on and put them in the fridge, you can drink them three, four days later. I, I don't, because they have, they're protected, they have high acidity, they have high tannins, these are antioxidant, uh, obviously acidity is a preservative, you just put the cork on, make sure you put it in the fridge, you don't keep it somewhere warm like your kitchen surface and everything stays healthier in the fridge, um, so you can keep these wines for at least four to five days, so don't feel like you have to drink everything now, but equally if you want to, like I, I, I'm quite happy to watch you all do that, <laughs> to see what happens, but 